Welcome back everyone. Today I am working on the ZA50 Pook moped engine. I'm going to reassemble this. First thing I want to point out is I am not using the three piece bearings. I'm using these bearings because they're one piece and they're easier to use. Also, I had to use a replacement crank and I went through a couple different cranks. I found some of the aftermarket cranks to not be up to par. Some of the circlips were machined in the wrong location and the end bushings were a little bit sloppier. Here's the one I settled on. There's a little bit of slop but not much. Here's another one with a lot more slop and this one has the wrong groove cut in it. The crank that I ended up going with is a Treats version 2 crank. I'll post a link to that. The first thing I'm going to do is put the bearings in the case. This is the Suzuki bearing. I'm going to do this one first. I'm going to heat this up with a torch. I found that 60 seconds heats it up enough that I can slide it right in. Start a timer. All right, there we go. That one is in. And I'm just going to hold it there until it cools down a little. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. This bearing is the Kawasaki bearing. All right, that's been 60 seconds. There we go. We have both of the crank bearings in. I'm gonna do this bottom bearing now, and that is a 6203. Okay, there we go. This one has a little circlip groove in there, so just make sure it's behind there. Uh, make sure those are in there. All right. I'm gonna let this cool down, and then I'll do the seal on this side. Press the ignition side oil seal in now, and you need a dealership tool, or you can use anything to press it in, um, but you only wanna press it 12 millimeters down, so, I turn down this socket to make it 12 millimeters so that way when I press it down it'll stop. The reason you want to do this is there is a oiling channel in there and if you press it too far oil will not be able to get to the bearing. Oil the seal. I'm using just a two stroke oil and I'm putting it with the lips facing in just like that. I'm going to set this thing on it like that. Slowly press it in. And it should come to a stop when it hits that edge. There we go. Okay. And that should be exactly 12 millimeters down. And there's a gap in there for the oil. Now I'm going to do the seal on the output shaft. Same thing. I'm going to oil the outside. And set that right here. All right. At this stage, I need to put the output shaft through here and then press this little seal racer onto it. Oil this through. Okay. Let's see. I'm gonna oil this piece because that's gonna go where the seal is sitting. And then I'm going to actually use the crank bearing races to push this down. I'm going to just spin this because I want to make sure that lip is okay. Okay, now I'm going to switch to this one. It's kind of like moped Jenga. There we go. And that spins very nicely. It's a little stiff, but it's really smooth. The magneto side is done. I got the bearings in, the seals in, and I did make this little uh, socket thing. We're also gonna use this tool on the other side. You don't need to use this tool. You could just press it a little and then check it, but I figure why not make one. This is a 6005 bearing, and you can just pop these seals out. I'm gonna install the 6005 bearing. Bearing should fit right in now. If I can do it straight. 
And then I'm gonna tap it in a little. Have something on hand to tap it in, just in case it's, oh, there we go. Don't wanna pull it out. So leave it all the way in until it's cooled. Now we have to do the cage needle bearing for the output shaft. That is a B810. I'm just gonna put a little two stroke oil on there. You just want this bearing flush with the case. I'm gonna put a washer on it so I don't push it too far. Perfect. We need to press one more seal. Uh, this one is a little tricky because you don't want to press it past that lip. I'm going to oil the walls of this. Just a dab on the seal. This one you also have to press in 12 millimeters so we can just press it in using this tool we made earlier or if you have the dealer tool. All right, that bottomed out, so it should be 12 millimeters from the lip. Pull it out and check it. There's this little oiling channel here. Make sure that you can see light through that. You should be able to see light come into that. All right, so we're good. All the bearings and seals are in here. It fits together nicely with the output shaft. Now we can take it apart and measure for the crank shims and put it back together. So I am ready to put the case halves together with the crank in the middle. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky with a ZA50 rebuild. To rebuild the ZA50 properly, you have to measure between the two bearings and you have to measure the width of the crank. Then you have to use special shims to take up that slot. All this information is in the manual and it's pretty easy to follow. The manual calls for 0.15 millimeters to 0.05 millimeters of uh, end float or slop in there. First thing I'm gonna measure is the crank. There are little steps on the side, so don't measure right here. You gotta measure all the way in. I get 35.89. I'm gonna measure on the other side. Again, 35.89. Now I need to measure the gasket. 0.22 millimeters. And I am squishing it a little bit because, because it will be squished down in the case. Okay, now I need to measure these. And the way that I'm going to do this, normally you would use this tool, and I'll show that method as well, but I'm going to use this perfectly flat machine piece of aluminum and my caliper, kind of like a depth gauge. First thing I'm going to do is measure this. I've got 25 millimeters. And I'm gonna zero that. So I'm at zeros. So I'm gonna stick this through here and extend this through there, kind of like that, to measure the distance. Since I zeroed this out for the width for the width of this, it'll just measure from there down. So I've got this on the bearing surface, and I've got 31.88. I'm going to check the other side of the bearing just to see if they're both the same. Maybe average the two. This one I have 31.88. So they're the same. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. We've got 4.29 millimeters. All right, time to do a little bit of math. Add these three up and we get 36.39 millimeters. And then you want to minus that crank, 35.89, and you will get 0.5 millimeters. So we have 0.5 millimeters of slop, and we need to take that up. There are 0.5 millimeters of slop or clearance between the crank and the case bearings. The manual calls for 0.15 to 0.05 millimeters. I'm going to go in the middle and do 0.1 millimeter. So. If we do 0.1 millimeter, that gives us 0.4 millimeters that we need to shim. And we could easily just do 0.2 millimeters on each side. We want to shim the crank 0.4 millimeters so that you're left with 0.1 millimeter of end float or slop in the crank. Since we have two sides of the crank, we can divide this by two and we will get 0.2 millimeters. So we need two 0.2 millimeter shims, one on each side of the crank, and then we should be good. 
So the way the manual says to do this is a little bit different. The manual says to first install 1.1 millimeter shim on the clutch side of the crank and install it. And then you can measure and uh, offset the other side of the crank with the shims. You could easily do it this way, but I don't like that way because then the crank is offset in the case. And I figure why not just make them centered. The way that I'm rebuilding this case, we measured the crank and the cases to get our shim size. Now that we have that, we just need 0.2 millimeter shims, which I bought off Treatland. Install one on each side and then pull into the case. So that's actually how I'm gonna do it, but I'll kind of integrate how they would do it too so you can see both ways. This is kind of per the manual, but a little bit different. I put the bearing in here first. The manual says you should put it on here first. Uh, we know that we need 0.2 millimeters on each side, so I'm going to put my first 0.2 millimeter on here, like that. Okay, and now we have to push this through. I'm going to lube this up quite a bit because I want it to slide through the seals really nicely. I'm also going to lube this seal because I don't want it to stick on that seal. Okay. Now we can just slide this through a little and it should get st stuck on the bearing, just like that. I'm now going to use a tusk puller. Pretty simple, you put this piece on, then you put this nut on there. This is from the stock crank. Okay. Now we slide this on. This part slides around like that. Now we just crank it down and it'll pull the crank in. Okay, make sure that your rod is in the right location. It actually shouldn't matter too much on this side. Okay, and then tighten it like this. <clears throat> all right, and that's all the way in. Pull that, pull the nut, remove this, and you're good. If you're doing the rebuild my way, you would simply put on the gasket and put a 0.2 millimeter shim here and push this thing in and pull it through the same way. If we were to use the factory tool, which is this, we can do that now. If we were to use the factory tool, which is this, we can do that now. Um, at this stage, you can still kind of do it. I can do it to check, to see if my measurements are good. First thing, you put this upside down like that. Slide this in. Make sure that everything is resting evenly. Make sure the sleeve is on the bearing inner race. And then you can tighten the set screw. Now you would flip this over and you'd have the gasket in here and you'd set this on here. Now we would measure the shim. So you can measure between the bearing race on the crank and this sleeve. If you remember, we had 0.5 millimeters of slop. We took up 0.2 millimeters on this side and we are gonna want 0.1 millimeter when we're finished. So the clearance right now should be 0.3 millimeters and we're gonna put a 0.2 millimeter shim in there, leaving 0.1 millimeter of end float. And put this right here, set it down, and you can't rock this back and forth and you can slide this out. So it is tight, but it does fit in there. Uh, we can try the 0.2 millimeter. So this is the shim we're gonna put in there, 0.2 millimeter, and that does slide in and out nicely so that'll give us you know about 0.1 millimeter of clearance so this 0.2 millimeter is the same as the shim we're going to put in it and that is about perfect so that is how you'd use the factory tool now you would put the 0.2 millimeter shim on here and pull these together remember i used this as a depth gate and that got us the same results so whatever you have this was i think 30 bucks on amazon versus this is 100 from Treats. And you can only use this for one thing.
I'm gonna put my .2 shim on here. Now I'm gonna put on the gasket and put them together. Uh, I am gonna oil this gasket. I like to oil the gaskets because I feel like it makes them uh, get a little bit soft and then when I tighten the cases I feel like they squeeze down a little bit better. Uh, I feel like it makes them seal better. Slide this over. There's a locating pin there. So now you can install your uppercase. Oh, I am also going to oil this shaft because that's sliding into the seal and this bearing. And I'll oil those as well. Make sure the conrod is at the top. Okay. Once again, we can use this crank puller. All right, I'm gonna work this evenly. I'll do a couple there and a couple turns here. We just wanna make sure we bring it together without doing it crooked. Okay. When you're doing this, make sure that your con rod is here and not sticking out somewhere else. Okay, bring up this one. All right, it's bottomed out there, bottomed out in the back. We're good. Now I just need to put the case bolts back in and I went ahead and bought all new Allen heads. So that'll make it a lot easier. I'll go through the bolts really quick. They're all M6 by one metric. This first one right here is uh, 60 millimeters. The next four around the crank are 50 millimeters. These two down here are 25 millimeters. And the one in the back here is 40 millimeters. The manual says six foot pounds, so I'm gonna go around and do that. All right, last thing I'm gonna do is cut off the gasket. Do that on both sides. Thanks everyone for watching this ZA50 crank shimming rebuild tutorial. This video is just about rebuilding the crank. The next video is gonna be about reassembling the transmission and the shimming on that. Please like and subscribe, buy me a coffee if you can. All of that helps me. Please like and subscribe, buy me a coffee if you can. All of that helps me make more videos and grow the channel. I'll post links in the description to different bearings, the bearing sizes, things like that. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments. Hope this video helped. Have a great day.